The Royal National Park, south of Sydney, has been popular with campers and fishermen for over 100 years. The Sands of Gary Beach. This tranquil scene gives no hint to the life and death struggle that took place just a nautical mile off the northern headland. Eleven men were violently cast into the sea when their ship foundered beneath them. None would survive. Undola's loss remains one of the great unsolved maritime mysteries of New South Wales. Named after a headland on the local Illawarra escarpment, Andola arrived in Sydney from Scotland in January of 1910. She was purpose-built for Coalcliffe collieries to transport coal from their extended jetty at Coalcliffe to Sydney. Although she was specifically designed to operate from the wharf, Andola often touched bottom in rough conditions. With frequent loss of revenue and the threat of wrecking the ship, Andola's ties with the jetty ceased after 12 months and she was transferred elsewhere. At the foot of the Illawarra escarpment, the collieries built a network of light railways from the pits to several open sea jetties. Transferred to jetties at Sandon and Balambi points, Andola joined a small fleet of colliers transporting coal to Sydney for use in the harbourside industry and the bunkers of visiting steamships. In fair conditions, on the morning of December 20, 1918, Andola departed Sydney Harbour for the last time, bound for Balambi Jetty. Intending to load and return to Sydney immediately, it was going to be a long day's journey into night for the crew of the Collier. The mercury over the previous few days had been nearing the old century mark, fanned by a wind shift to the west by mid-morning each day. However, a turn in the weather was on its way. A strong southeasterly change was forging its way up the coast. Andola met its full force off Port Hacking. In spite of the difficult conditions, the collier arrived at the Balambi jetty just after 5pm. Loading was soon underway for the return journey to Sydney. From the bridge, the captain spoke to the wharf hands about the change in the weather. From all reports, he appeared to be in good spirits. An hour after her arrival, loading was complete. The captain himself cast the lines from the jetty. Their last voyage had begun. As the steamer pulled away from the jetty, men could be seen standing on the hatch combing, levelling the coal. The southeast winds had cleared the smoke from the bushfires that had been burning along the coastline of the Royal National Park. To the west, the last light of day was settling over the magnificent Illawarra escarpment. At 7.25 that evening, north of Stanwell Park, the steamship Bermagui sighted the lights of an approaching steamer, the northbound Andola. Captain O'Connor on the Bermagui gave the Andola only a fleeting glance, as he had passed her on scores of occasions under the same conditions. However, within 20 minutes of that sighting, Andola had foundered. The identity of the wreck was confirmed by divers in the mid-1970s, finally solving the mystery of her whereabouts. Lying upright on a sandy bottom at a depth of 46 metres, her bow points north, the direction in which she was travelling.
often cleaned by visiting divers, the white porcelain toilet bowl stands out from the drab colour of the hull. Positioned on the forecastle head for over 90 years, it resisted many attempts at salvage by earlier divers. The camera moves over the stern of the wreck, invisibility that only occurs several times each year. A single lifeboat davit rests on the side of the collier's engine, then forward, the ship's boiler. The vessel's hull has fallen apart like wet cardboard, leaving her machinery completely exposed. Within 24 hours of Undola's loss, wreckage was discovered. On Stanwall Park and Little Marley beaches, lifeboats were found. Undola painted on their sterns. Colliers, completing their journey up and down the coast, reported no sign of the missing steamer. Company officials were slow to react, waiting three days before a vessel was dispatched to look for survivors. The paddle tug Copper Tie searched down to the five islands off Wollongong without success. On Christmas Eve, the search was abandoned. No bodies were ever recovered. Undola was a tried and tested vessel, regularly serviced, with an experienced crew who had endured far worse seas than those experienced on the night of the tragedy. Experts refused to believe the ship had been overwhelmed by the elements. Some suggested a mechanical fault led her to be wrecked on the jib and bombora at the entrance to Port Hacking. However, others believed something else had been the cause of her demise. The Court of Marine Inquiry brought an open finding. However, during the 1920 Royal Commission into the loss of the three colliers, it was suggested that she may have struck a mine. The previous year, a mine laid by the German raider Wolf resulted in the loss of the 10,000-ton freighter Cumberland near Eden on the far New South Wales coast. However, the outline of Andola's hull appears intact, lending no weight to this theory. The heart of the steamer, Andola's steam engine and boiler. The ladders and catwalks that allowed access to the engine, together with the sounds of moving machinery, have long since disappeared. Once, engineers and greasers maintained a prudent eye on its operation. The ship's coal-fired boiler, the source of the engine's power, it was here under hot and oppressive conditions, firemen sustained power to the ship. Second only to the Tugra wreck in the Sydney area, the Andola is richly inhabited by marine life. Cuttlefish in the autumn months, some reaching a metre in length, frequent the wreck. Masters of camouflage, these highly intelligent creatures protest in brilliant colour changes when confronted by divers. On very rare occasions, mostly in the early summer, sunfish visit the wrecks. Their stay is a short one, usually one or two days to allow cleaner fish to rid their bodies of parasites.
So what caused the vessel to founder? A clue may lie in the book SS Undola, a collier in the Illawarra trade, produced by the University of Wollongong. It details the costs of running a vessel employed on the coal runs. The book states that in 1912, Andola broke down off Bondi when the steering chains parted. These chains, connecting the steering gear to the tiller, dictate the position of the rudder in response to an order from the helm. Is there any evidence on the wreck to support this theory? Andola's tiller, positioned at the top of the rudder post. Oddly, the rudder lies hard starboard. Is this a clue to the loss of the ship? With the steamer making for Sydney in a following sea, a break in the chain would have left the rudder banging like a barn door, possibly causing her to broach and roll onto her beam's end and founder. Partially buried in heavy rubble, this artefact could hold the key to the mystery. It is the vessel's helm. The steering wheel has long since disappeared, but at the top of the mechanism is a pointer that once indicated the position of the rudder to the helmsman. If this position does not match the harder starboard position of the Andola's rudder, the broken steering chain theory would be the major clue to the loss of the ship. However, the New South Wales Maritime Heritage Act forbids the disturbance or recovery of artefacts so it will remain a mystery. In the last light of the day, the ship slipped beneath the waves. As the cold drained life from their bodies, no doubt those that survived the sinking spent their remaining time thinking of their families their lives passing like the flickering images of an old movie projector. By the time the sun rose the next morning, all had perished. <laughs>